Hey everybody, welcome, it's the Zex Road Channel. My name is Michael, and here's a sample of the main camera of the Redmi Go, which is the cheapest ever device released by Xiaomi. It costs only $65, but I do have some help kits here. First of all, an external microphone so that you can hear some decent audio quality. And yes, I'm also using a gimbal, the Feiyutek G6 Plus in this situation, but a lot of them would be suitable because this camera has no electronic image stabilization. Uh, concerning the rest of the features, we have a few minutes to explore them. Let's go. These are some close-ups of the Redmi Go. And very often going cheap means a lot of shortcomings. In this review we're going to learn more about this device which happens to be the cheapest of the Redmi line. And Redmi is the new sub-brand hosted by Xiaomi. Apparently now the more expensive and premium looking phones by the Chinese company are going to be branded the Xiaomi and the Redmi brand is going to be focused into mid-range to low budget but they also plan to release some flagships as well. So the Redmi Go, which indeed costs 65 US dollars, is based on the Android Go edition a slimline stock Android distribution which is designed to run smoothly on phones with not too high specifications. And as usual, the hardware, the software and the user experience are the topics we want to cover. Uh, right now in this segment of super cheap smartphones the competition is not too tight and we can generally divide the smartphones over there into two main categories. Those which are not Google certified where you can get slightly more decent hardware at a bit lower price and the second main category are the Go Edition phones which are officially Google certified like this Redmi Go and the closest rival is perhaps the Nokia 2.1 which was launched at a lower price but apparently now costs a little more than the Redmi Go Edition. As already mentioned, this phone costs around $65, which is excellent for the specs that it offers, although there always is room for improvement. Do you know which will cost a little more than that and will give you unmatched privacy for the next five years? It's called Ivacy VPN, the sponsor of this review, a very easy to use, affordable and most importantly reliable VPN app. One of the fastest VPN solutions in the industry and it has also been awarded the fastest VPN service award 2019 by bestvpn.com. Why do you need a VPN? Because it protects your privacy and removes any kind of location restricted access to online content. What are the advantages? Well, safe browsing, protecting you from being spied by God knows who and with more than 1000 servers in more than 100 locations Ivacy VPN offers unmatched connectivity speed and on top of that supports the major platforms like iPhone, Mac OS, Android, Windows, even probably your home router. More information you can find in the description below the video as well as a tempting offer for a 5-year subscription and you can see how good the app works on the Redmi Go. It is right now connected to a German server while I'm physically present in Bulgaria. Ok, starting with the first big topic the hardware, and this is where the Redmi Go gets most of the criticism. It is based on the Snapdragon 425, which is a quad-core CPU. And the first big remark it is getting is why is it not based on the 429, which was already available prior to the launch of the Redmi Go, and is a little more power efficient, furthermore having 8 cores as opposed to 4, which is packed in the 425. But let's say the difference in performance is not that huge. There's a 5-inch HD display, 1GB RAM, 8GB internal storage and 3000 mAh battery. So far so good. Now the two specs I like the most, dual SIM slot and a dedicated micro SD slot. It is not a hybrid slot as most phones, but a dedicated one. The other great thing that people would mostly appreciate, there is no notch, unlike most of the 2018 and 2019 phones. but you can see that the bezels are rather thick. The main camera is 8 megapixel. There is of course no image stabilization, not even a software possibility with third-party apps like the Open Camera app. Uh, if you're wondering whether Google Cam port from some of the distributions would work, the answer is no. 
but overall it shoots alright for such a low budget. Here is a sample of the Redmi Go in full HD recording. I want to show you how it looks in almost perfect conditions. 1080p at 30 frames per second is the maximum resolution. Although the sensor is 4K capable, there is no possibility to record 4K with the Snapdragon 425, not even 1080p at 60 frames per second, but using a gimbal gives you pretty decent outcome. If you want to replay videos on your phone, it wouldn't make sense to get them into high resolution because the Just HD screen doesn't allow any spectacular image. Close to the stock Android means that there is no color adjustment possible and the brightness, well, not too great in daylight. $65, don't forget it. The plastic build and the placement of the camera on the backside remind a lot the design of older iPhones and you can see that there is no fingerprint scanner. Uh, in terms of build quality, I don't think you're gonna get a band test on Jerry Rick Everything's channel for a $65 device, and I'm not doing a band test over here, but the build quality looks decent. It is not premium at all, but even some more expensive devices use similar polycarbonate like the Poco F1. What I really miss from the retail box is a silicon case, could have been a great addition to keeping your phone safe and as usual the Chinese websites are full of affordable solutions. The second big topic and what mostly matters about the smartphone it's a software uh, running Android Go version which is based on Android 8.1 Oreo almost three months after its initial release and it's still based on the February security patch which is a little bit disappointing for three months Xiaomi did not manage to bring a decent update. Is that going to get Android 9? I'm not very sure about that. Most of the rumors say it wouldn't. As usual, if you enjoy tinkering with Android, you can unlock the bootloader and install a custom ROM, but of course most of us are interested in the experience with the stock software. The most important about this device is the slimline version of Android. A simple fact, the fast boot image of the stock ROM is only 813 megabytes. As a comparison, a regular MIUI build is more than twice larger, so you can imagine that this truly is the Android with only the features that matter. Some of the configuration settings are missing, and so are most of the unnecessary services that we all hate and consume too much RAM. I wish this was available for flagships as well. There are different apps from the Google package, the Go editions of the popular Gmail, which is called Gmail Go, the YouTube Go, the Maps Go, and so on. And besides being lighter, in some case way lighter, they also have the possibility to control the consumed bandwidth of traffic. So not only the hardware of this phone is budget, the software is also designed to be thoughtful of your expenses about traffic. So if you live in an area with bad coverage, or if your data plan only allows one or two gigabytes per month, that could still be enough for experiencing most than what people are looking to get with an unlimited data plan. The software allows only one of the SIM cards to be Vo LTE enabled. There's no face and lock feature, no surprise. And uh, the stock phone application does not have phone recording out of the box. You probably know that this feature is uh, banned and not allowed in some countries due to some uh, legal things. But if you really insist on getting uh, automatic phone recording, you can do that with a third party application from the Google Play Store. No infrared blaster, no fingerprint scanner. Nicely, we have an FM radio service. Out of the box, the available storage is 5.5 GB and unfortunately that implies a limit on the amount of installed apps from Play Store. If you like playing games, you only have space for one or two big games. As mentioned, there is the possibility to use a dedicated microSD slot which is recognizing cards up to 128 GB. The settings and the phone features are stockish, so you have the lightweight experience of using vanilla Android, the typical config settings, the smooth experience and even some well-known gestures. While Xiaomi couldn't keep calm and added some bloatware like the Mint Launcher and the Cleaner, the software is closer to stock Android rather than to MIUI. Here's the camera app, nothing fancy, no slow motion, 
Because of the weak hardware, photos are... Uh, you've seen some samples already. Clearly not a photography phone, but it's not much worse than the Redmi 6A, for example, at a definitely lower price. In terms of battery life, 3000 mAh work good with the not-too-big screen, and the processor is anyways a weak one, so not a very power-hungry. In other words, battery life can be decent and you can get cycles of up to two or even three days with moderate usage. So is that the right phone for you? Well, if budget is priority, it most probably is. The price of this one right now is equivalent to buying two or three good cases for a premium flagship so it's not expensive at all. Having Vo LTE, dedicated microSD, lightweight vanilla Android, a large battery and no notch sounds tempting. Its closest rival from the Redmi line has much more decent hardware. It's the Redmi 6A. Unfortunately, it runs MIUI, which is much heavier and eats up from the hardware advantage. So we can summarize that sometimes going really cheap can be all right if it's done in a reasonable way. And that's how we can summarize the Redmi Go. It's a reasonably well done smartphone, which is really affordable. You know what? I'm gonna pin a comment with the best current budget smartphones. And you can contribute to expand this list by telling me which is your absolutely favorite, super cheap Android smartphone. I'd love to hear your opinion in the comment section right below the video. Uh, other than that, like if you enjoyed this last few minutes. Subscribe if you haven't done it yet. My name is Michael. I really thank you for being around for the last few minutes. Uh, thank you a lot for the overwhelming support. Take a good care of yourself and looking forward to see you in the next episode. Cheers!